Let's check out how a solar and battery system impacts your build. G'day, I'm Eddie Springer. As part of the Bill Hunter series, we're looking at electricity bills and how solar and batteries can help reduce your energy costs. If you've had a recent solar system installed and a battery installed, you might wanna know why your bill is made up of the different components and why you're still receiving part of a bill. Maybe you would think that you might get more solar exports out of your bill. You're looking at that solar export line only or, or why the bill still has some components of it. As part of this Bill Hunter series, we aim to explain these different components and how they're made up. So we do get a lot of questions after solar is installed as to why my electricity bill might still be high, what can I do to combat my high electricity usage, and understanding how the solar system is performing to determine whether the solar system is doing what it needs to do for you and, and how to best utilize that solar electricity. So let's look at this electricity bill for a house at Deception Bay with a solar system installed and a battery. So from this bill, we can see the billing period is 30 days. And on the front page, we can see that the dollars for this period is only $77, so it's quite low. The electricity consumption, the average per day is 12.3 kilowatt hours. And the same time last year was 4.65. Now this homeowner I know has purchased an electric vehicle in the last 12 months. So we can see what impact that has had on the battery and solar system over that 12 month period. You know, same time last year, their consumption was really low and that's just showing how much the battery is working for them for a small household deception bay with a pool and all the modern appliances. So EV usage has increased them a little bit, but even with an EV usage, 12.3 kilowatt hours is very low. We'll go down to page two to have a look at the rest of the bill. So we can see that this is a domestic electricity bill and there are demand charges on here as well. Now for a normal battery and solar customer, we probably wouldn't see demand as high as what we have here of 9.89 kilowatts. Now with an EV charger, and at a 30 day billing period, this is potentially a day when there wasn't much sunshine and the battery was quite flat and some charging and energy usage happened overnight. Maybe charger and aircon or charger and cooking that is happening in that evening peak period or that evening demand. We can see the general usage for the period is 369 kilowatt hours, which equates to that 12.3 kilowatt hours per day average. We can also see a significant amount of leftover solar that is exporting to the grid. So this is a large solar system. Once the battery is full during the day, we then export the rest of that energy into the grid. And this solar export is broken up into two parts. AGL on this bill is obviously allowing them to export a certain amount of kilowatt hours at 12 cents and the remainder of the kilowatt hours exported into the grid is being paid at five cents. So solar exports on this bill equate to $78, but remember that is not the only solar savings we're seeing. There is a large proportion of solar at this site that is self-consumed within the property and is also charging the battery. Once you install a battery on a solar system, you will find your exports decrease because we're selling less electricity into the grid, we're actually storing it into the battery, and we should see that the overall kilowatt hours for the property will reduce as the battery discharges into the property each night. So energy is used first by the, by the homeowner, it is then stored into the battery, and then once the battery is full, the remainder is exported into the grid. So when wrapping up this bill, look, it'd be nice to get rid of this demand charge. So another $33 saving would get this bill down even further. So that's just in homeowner usage, making sure the EV charging is not happening in that peak period or when the batteries aren't full or the solar system's not operational. So trying to charge during the day or on weekends. And general usage, look, they're probably not gonna get around that, but trying to, again, maximize their daytime usage of their solar, maximize their usage when the battery is full uh, to reduce those kilowatt hours. Uh, solar feed-in tariff's excellent, you know, $70 
as a bonus for their solar system after their self-consumption battery charge. This system also has the added advantage of blackout protection, so backup power from the battery, especially during a, a summer period where we have high intensity storms coming through, we have peak demand on the grid, uh, battery systems do give you that added advantage of giving you backup for your home in the event of an outage. Thanks for your time while watching this Bill Hunter series. We are still looking for electricity bills that we can assess for you to maximize your return on solar and battery systems. Cheers.